What are you fixing today? I am fixing the gas tank. We were fueling up this morning and it just went all over the gas station and we found out it's a hose that's leaking. And it's in the trickiest spot, of course. I can't even see what I'm doing, but I'm trying to do it as best I can here. Everything's old in this van. Nothing new, so. It should hold, actually, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. It looks like it's really molded to the shape of that thing. I can even put this clamp back on. Moment of truth. <laughs> it's working. I think it's working. Awesome. Yeah, it is. It's so weak. Fire ballooning was an offshoot of really um, love is in the air ballooning. We were taking people up traditionally in our basket and realized that people had struggled. So as often as we wanted to take them up, we could not afford to do it on our own. At that time, we weren't sustainable. And so we were guided to really create a nonprofit called Chariot of Fire Ballooning. And through Chariot of Fire Ballooning, what we do is seek grants and funding so that those who could not afford to just fly with us on their own, even though we have the basket that they can use, they then can have the support, whether we take them as a grant or whether they subsidize it and match funds or whatever. So it became really an avenue of funding the rides for those who couldn't afford to fly on their own. I was flying for a commercial ride operator, which I had done contractually across the nation. And we had a situation where Vicki was actually teaching a class and one of the students was just overwhelmed that there might be an opportunity to go fly. But when we got out there, we didn't realize that she had mobility restrictions. She couldn't even get in the basket. She was determined to get in, and so we literally pushed and shoved and pulled and got her in the basket, and she had a wonderful ride. And then when we landed, she had this fear on her face of, now what do you do? How do I get out? And I told her, I said, you know, we'll tip the basket over and you can, you can crawl out of the basket. Well, everyone else had already gotten out of the basket. They're high-fiving. Oh, gee, wasn't that great? That was a wonderful time. Life was great. And here she's crawling out on the desert floor, and you could feel the humility of it. And Vicki turned to me and she says, there's got to be a better way. And I said, I know of no baskets that can do anything with mobility restricted passengers. And she said, well, there's got to be something. So we literally researched for about 90 days and finally found a manufacturer. It's one of five in the entire world. It's built with a ramp and a polycarbonate window. And it's got the ADA bracketing for wheelchairs and everyone can walk on. So nobody has to um, push their bodies to climb in a traditional basket. If you're in a wheelchair and you can push yourself on, great. If we can push you on, great. We can bracket them down and they are tr safe. They have a five point harness. And once they're seated in the basket, they can see what you and I see. They're not limited by the top of the wicker and seeing the horizon. They get to have the full experience of ballooning and um, that's priceless. Tell us a story about a client that utilized the wheelchair basket. We had Ron go up, he's a paralyzed vet who was a paratrooper. And so when he lost the ability to use his legs, he felt like part of his life had been taken. And he had been given an opportunity to fly in a balloon before, but like I said, when you sit are seated in a traditional basket, you cannot see except out the horizon. And he just was thrilled with the experience of having the ability to see his entire surroundings just like you and I could. He came out, he was in a sports wheelchair. So it's like, okay, this guy's gonna have a good time. And boy, he did. He he got in that basket, turned it around. We got them all bracketed in, and we're up there flying. And and he just thought that was awesome. And it, it was kind of fun because he goes, "Oh my God, this is something I've always wanted to do." He rolled out across the ramp, 
and he kicked his wheelchair up on the rear wheels and he's dancing in his wheelchair saying thank you, thank you, thank you. One of my most favorite was a young woman, uh, Katie, from Australia who came out with her mom who had been given an opportunity to fly in Australia and then because of her mobility restrictions was told she couldn't. And so we met her in Las Vegas. Her mom brought her out from Australia for her 21st birthday. and. Um, just to see her mom and her enjoy this experience and the looks on their faces as she pointed out different parts of the city and the red rocks and everything that she could see because of the polycarbonate window. Um, I just was totally taken by this moment that the mom and daughter shared and it was unique to them. Um, but we facilitated that and it's just, it's one of the greatest gifts I could ever imagine. After one of the hot air balloons, uh, trying to find out where it's going to land so we can pick it up. <laughs> it's uh, quite the adventure. It takes a community to launch a hot air balloon, especially one that's 160,000 cubic feet. And so to do that, when we have the for-profit going, we have to pay the crew to do it. So when we have a non-profit, when we have people that are willing to support the organization and come out and volunteer their time, that keeps the expenses down and keeps the fund full so that we have more opportunities to take more people. Volunteers are our next crews. They're our next pilots. Volunteers are very important to ballooning. If it wasn't for them, those of us that physically can't do it anymore or can't go running down a field chasing the balloon again, those are our volunteers. You don't always have a set crew that can be at, at every rally. And sometimes you have to travel distances to, to go there. So a lot of times you'll go and you won't have enough people to actually crew. So the volunteers are a big help. And the best part of it is watching the excitement on their face because this is probably something they've never done before. It gets them excited. It gets them involved. They no longer have fears because they actually get to see what is going on behind the scenes, all the safety precautions that are done. And especially with the kids, the young kids, those are our future pilots. And you got to keep them excited about it. I think sometimes we see it from afar and we're not sure if we can participate or if only those who are special or trained can do it. And what I would like them to know is we would love to train you. We would love to have your help. And if we can, we'll put you in the basket and give you an experience as well. Without volunteers, this could not happen. We have a board of, I believe, eight or nine people from the community that have the belief that this is a life-changing experience. They dedicate their time. They are a non-paid board. They go out and solicit funds. They go out and do presentations. They deal with civic organizations. And they are the ones that power that nonprofit portion of it that allows us to make those life-changing flights for those people. What I would love is for those who have the opportunity and have a little extra that would like to support um, the art of ballooning being available to everyone is to go to our nonprofit site and there is a place where they can donate called Razu and what that does is it will fund those who would like to fly who cannot afford to and either way um, we will work with them to make sure that whatever it is that they would like to experience that we can support them and offering that and getting them in the skies because Kevin and I really believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fly.